Hi, this is Nate Hirsch, welcoming you to the Tim Stowers Show, the Georgia Southern Eagles. Victors this past weekend over the Valdosta State Blazers, 24 to 13. Pick up win number one on the season, and coach, I know it feels a lot better, certainly picking up that first win. Well, it really does. You know, anytime you get your first win of the season, uh, I think you get everything started heading in the right direction, and especially after this point loss last week. But we had a great attitude on the practice field last week, three great days of work. Our players have really responded, and we improved quite a bit from last week to this week. Well, giving credit where credit was due, Valdosta State certainly hung in there, scoring early in the game, and uh, their defense, as well as ours, really kind of keeping the game close. They had a super defensive football team. That's the best Valdosta State defense that we've played against. Uh, you got to start with Antonio Edwards, their two-time Gulf South Conference Player of the Year, and then Andre Hampton, the defensive end from Valdosta, uh, Calvin Walker from Warren County, and then Harold McLean and Michael Berry put him in there in the middle linebacker. They had some super football players on the defensive side of the ball. All right. We've got a lot of things to talk about during the program today. We'll be coming back and taking a look at first half action in the Georgia Southern Valdosta State game. But first, let's break for this timeout. Blazers of Valdosta State this past Saturday at Paulson Stadium. Kind of overcast skies and temperatures at game time only in the upper 70s. I thought at first you might like it to be a little warmer where you might have an advantage with your depth. It could be uh, advantageous to be a little bit warm, but Valdosta is a pretty hot place. And I think they, I think Valdosta was pretty much prepared for that. They sure were. All right, let's take you back then to the opening half highlights in the Eagles' victory over Valdosta State. Georgia Southern wins the coin toss. And, of course, when they win the coin tour, it's normally going to elect to defer until the second half, as you see the Eagles taking the field with the band on hand. Well, it's always good to see the band there at Paulson Stadium. That get, gives the players a little extra inspiration. I thought our football team was really ready to play, and I thought they were ready to play the week before, but they're kind of extremely motivated this week because of the bad taste in their mouth. Reed Hayes kicking off in the end zone. Uh, does a good job there. Our kicking game continues to be uh, uh, a plus for us. Uh, it's a little quick screen out in the flats. We've got some good game tackling. we got a lot of people around the football right here. This is a really different type of offense. Uh, this is unusual, uh, different than any other offense that I've ever seen before. It's kind of a running, running type offense. It was about four, five, or six. Now, there's a late hit right there, and we can't, uh, we can't put up with that. But sometimes you're going to have a late hit, but I think that was kind of a flavor one. I'm just not going to stand for a late hit from our football team. But that's the thing that kept this drive alive and kept this drive going. What they did the most of the game was the short passes instead of running the football. Really, and that's their forte. Instead of running the ball, they threw a short, control-type passing game. We missed a bunch, a lot of tackles here. I think there were three missed tackles on this play. And Calvin Walker from Augusta, I'm sure he was excited about that, uh, scores a touchdown and put up balance to stay up 7-0. Several missed tackles there. Here's your first series. Here's Charles cutting up and getting some good yardage on the option. He squeezed the football, though. I'm going to pitch it out to Chaps in front. Here's Michael Berry, the linebacker transfer from Clemson, uh, making another super play for Valhalla State. And Charles couldn't find anybody open. He started cramming out. Then he hit Steve Payne on a long pass. Steve made a good super job of catching football, but it's nullified by holding to him. Again, hurt ourselves. It really did. Still back to back punt. Bill did another good job of punting. Again, the best yeah. thing about his punts, Coach, has been so little return yardage against the Eagles this season. That's true, but uh, we want to make it to zero if we possibly can. Good game tackling. Right? Count the number of blue jerseys around the football right there. That's outstanding. He just still continue to work on a pass rush. Brandon Roselle with the tackle on the sideline. He's got him hung up and about four more blue shirts come up. That's great. Ronald Johnson, Darius Dawson, Anthony Williams there in on that tackle. So you got the ball back. Got the football back, hand the ball off. To, they gave us a little bit of a stun over there to, to the boundary and gave us a little bit of a problem. There's Michael Berry again making another good play. All the boxes back to pass. A little bit over, a little bit under thrown. So Darren Willis had him open. There's Dominique Turner. And a host of other blue jerseys make a second commercial here in the state for a part right in there in the action. That was he a pitched the ball out to Shaft and Fred, who had a missed block right here. 
which hurt us. Right there, had a couple other missed blocks. And the ball off from the outside of here to James Williams. Here's a big third down pass. Here's a big third down pass. And Charles did a super job of getting the ball to Terrence Sorrell, and Terrence made a good catch. And, and like anytime you can get a first down and keep moving the chains inside the 30, you're doing something because the field shrinks down there quite a bit. Yeah, I believe this is the fourth down call where Charles sprints out. I just felt like we need to go ahead and get points on the scoreboard, and Charles uh, gets in the end zone, has some pretty good blocking on the point. Very big play, ties the game up following Reed Haley's conversion at 7-7. Again, that was a big fumble recovery that set up that short drive, and Bostick finished it off. He took a timeout there right before he got the touchdown. Now, Charles does a good job running the trap option out the back door, and uh, does a good job of getting the ball down to about the four or five yard line. Now, this was the most disappointing thing to me, Nate, all day. We got the ball first and goal on about the five yard line, and we can't get it in the end zone. Terry Lester, uh, true freshman, a goal line tailback, doing a good job in there. We got to get the ball in the end zone right here. We got to find a way to get the ball in the end zone. Not too cross ball. Somebody's got to make the play, and I can show you we're going to go back to work next week and get a move, buddy, and learn how to score on the goal line. You're able to hold him and get the ball back again. You're able to hold him and get the ball back. You know, Brandon Roselle is a super block by Henry Pierce right there. Brandon Roselle is doing a super job of returning punts. The whole punt return team with Danny Brett and uh, uh, Henry Pierce and the rest of them are doing a super job on our punt return, and that's getting us better and better field position all the time. Now we're putting Joe Dupree in. We have a little play action pass. He won, he won open, and Joe throws it out of bounds. Joe's running the option. It's always good to put a fresh quarterback in there. Charles is a little bit tired of putting Joe in. And he's moving the football team, moving down three for a field goal right here. Joe's trying to hit Terrence Sorrell. I thought there might have been a little bit of contact there, but looking at the film there, it was a, it was a good call. Trying to get the ball deep to Terrence. They run the quarterback draw. Joe makes a good run, I believe, right here. Gets the first down. Got a hole in the football, though, Joe. And Reed Haley comes on to kick, a, I believe, a 36-yard field goal. And the kick is true. And it gives you a lead of 10 to 7, getting late in the first half of play. Because of their goal line stand, which I don't want to take anything away from Valhausen's defense, because they have a super defensive football team, so it should have been 17 to 7 at that point. I'm right, going to come back. Our halftime feature this week will look at the, certainly the arm of athletics that helps keep everything flowing and brings in the dollars at Southern Boosters. We'll find out more about a lot of their projects with the executive director, Frank Cook, after we break for these words. University to national fame in football, ticks are bringing us recognition and research dollars from around the world. The university is home to the one million specimen national tick collection of the Smithsonian Institution. Dr. James Oliver, world renowned for his work on tick and my genetics, directs the university's work that could lead to a reduced threat of Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and other ailments. Whether it's soaring with eagles or searching for answers, Georgia Southern University is playing for keeps. Position of excellence, our quality of life, our spirit and pride have made us one of the fastest growing campuses in the nation. The momentum of the campus continues to grow along with Southern's reputation for academic excellence. The quality of life enjoyed at this mid-sized university compares with the best in the South. So for a great education in an ideal setting, we're Georgia Southern University. Well, this week for our halftime feature, we'll take a visit with the executive director of Southern Boosters, Frank Hook. It's completing its uh, annual gifts campaign at this time of the year. Of course, this will be the fifth year that we will exceed over a million dollars in cash and gift and kind contributions for our program. The funds for Southern Boosters go, of course, to support the many scholarships for student athletes of all 14 varsity sports at Georgia Southern, as well as assisted with recruiting. In addition to that, Southern Boosters is responsible for assisting and helping develop new athletic facilities for our athletic department. Over the last many years, probably over $10 million in gift and kind contributions have benefited the many programs that we've had at Georgia Southern, facilities that we would not have had the money for 
that we have had the support of the people of this community and the surrounding areas. For instance, in the past, we've been able to build a weight room facility. We've been able to build two football practice fields, a soccer field, a kicking field. Of course, Paulson Stadium is built on contributions from boosters throughout the area. We've been able to complete a golf and driving range for our golf program. We have plans now to complete a new locker room that would be built at J.I. Clements Baseball Stadium that will benefit our baseball program that will house our, our locker room facilities for our Eagle athletes as well as our coaches' offices and a training room. We should start that project within the next few months. We have done uh, quite a bit of improvements at Paulson Stadium through gift and kind contributions, and these total some of the $10 million over the last many years, some of the facilities that we have built. And let me conclude by saying that not only we mentioned that on the last five years, Southern Boosters has been fortunate enough to exceed the million dollar level as well as adding on the capital development projects, which is another two and three and four hundred thousand dollars a year. And as I told, uh, mentioned in the program, that that is some ten million dollars plus over the last seven or eight years. I want to personally thank the people of Statesboro and Bullock County and the surrounding areas for the support they've given Georgia Southern University, both the foundation as well as Southern Boosters and Georgia Southern Athletics. We realized from the university, if it was not for the people of this community and the surrounding communities, that we would not have these facilities, we would not have these contributions and these gift and kind contributions. And on behalf of the entire university and the athletic program and Southern Boosters, we want to let you know how much we appreciate it because if it were not for people like you, our program would not be the success that it is today. At Graceland. You have, Coach, you have a 10-7 a lead, but you know you're in a fight. Well, they had an outstanding football team. We were struggling at times and moving the ball at times, and we were showing improvement. And I wanted badly for a football, offensive football team to take the ball and drive it 80 yards for the go-ahead for the touchdown and put us up 17-7, to and uh, we just didn't do it. All right. Let us take you down to the third quarter action from Paulson Stadium this past weekend as Georgia Southern will be receiving to start things in the second half. We're back to receiving. I believe Chris Wright. Uh, has an outstanding return here. Yes, he did. He returned it after about the 37-yard line and he had an outstanding field position. And our kickoff turn team continues to do well. You know, a little inside beard and give the ball off. And James Williams and Bossy cuts up for two or three on the option play. They run the quarterback draw and can't quite get enough for the first down and we have to kick it out of there. Bill Thatcher in the punt. I was just hoping he was going. At one point in time, I thought he was going to punt one. We got a good, pretty good coverage down there on the punt. Now, I get enough pass work. It's uh, Huey Hunt and Nick Davis. Good to see Nick uh, well again and able to play. Look at the three jerseys over there. We got Sean Austin and Derek Dawson on that tackle. Still not getting enough pressure on the quarterback. How they escaped that time, took the first down up there. Those little clean pass out to Dominique Roth. There's Anthony Williams, and I believe Darius helping out on the tackle again. Got to get more pressure on the players. Uh, Michael Morris coming in for the sack. Got to be careful there, Michael. Going to need more personal fouls. Yep. Well, they got one on them that time. That's right. <laughs> I believe that was on them. They called one on us that time. A little later on, and uh, probably got a 15-yard penalty. Here's a field goal they're going to miss this time. This field goal they missed the field goal. And I think we had a little pressure. I think that might have been Maurice Reed putting a little bit of pressure in there. Might have gotten his face and made him miss it. So you get the ball back and get a pretty good drive going. We got a pretty good dose of the dangerous looking play, but the one we practice all the time, so we don't feel quite as dangerous about it. We missed a couple blocks. Charles is scrambling back there in the back. He's scrambling around. Couldn't find anybody open, and he makes something happen with his running ability. Yeah, this is a critical fourth and one, and Terry Lester does a good job of getting the, getting the first down. And there's Frank and Stevens retaliating and getting us a 15 yard penalty. Really, they're turning it out to be offsetting penalties. I'm not going to put up, like I said, with any type of uh, personal foul penalties on Georgia Southern football team. On the shuttle pass, there's Marcus Walker making a good play on Chris Wright. They get the ball back deep in their own territory. Oh, Carroll made the tackle. He 
stop James and come back. Williams does a good job right here, keeping his feet and making something happen with the ball in his hands when a little outside beer that side. Same thing here again. James Williams originally signed with Dallas to State and played there a year, then transferred to Georgia Southern. Here's Michael Berry making another big, another big uh, big play inside the 20 yard line. Well, this is the first field goal to camp for extra point field goal camp that Reed Haley has missed uh, in the first two football games. He's made those two field goals and made the point. We're in the fourth quarter now. It's still 10 7. Fourth quarter. Big hit right here with Brandon Rose. Good lick on their sideline on third down play. And we get the ball back. And we just want to enjoy the Southern bread and butter offense. Charles makes the safety miss, cuts back. We got some blocking downfield. Darren Lewis is downfield helping block out. There's also. Uh, I think you'll see an offensive lineman come in and play right there with Darren Lewis and Charles Bassett goes 53 yards for the touchdown. If ever you needed a big play, you got it right there. You know, this time last year we weren't getting any big plays, and now we're getting a lot more big plays. We just need a little more consistency. We just need them through a little bit more each and every week. So you're leading 17 to 7. Yeah, a little fast for us right there. Why don't you him out of his pocket? And Ronald, Ronald, the pressure by Ronald Johnson defense line has probably allowed Marco Battle to make that one kick. The best pass defense is a good pass for it. But it sets you up with good operating room there, 38 yard line. Oh, he's playing now and he hits Darren Lewis and go out with perfect throw. Get the ball down inside, I think the inside the 10, that's about the five yard line. And Charles keeps it. For the touchdown right here off the ISO. And about this time, it's starting to feel a little bit better. I would hope so. 24 to 7. It winds up a 24 13 Georgia Southern finale as we'll visit with some of the players for the ballgame. Well, the stars in the Georgia Southern victory today, Marco Branham. I know it has to feel good for the defense to get out of this one with a win. Yes, it did feel real good to get out of this with a win. You know, we came together as a team and you had the intensity was high the whole game. Um, you know, I feel real good. We feel real good as a team, you know, to get the win, you know, get two games on our belt, get some young guys with some experience, and, you know, we feel pretty good going into the next game. You certainly didn't get down on yourself after last week's disappointment and came up with a big game. Well, um, I think um, with um, experience comes um, a little, you know, a little a way of learning how to cope with adversity, you know, and um, I think I coped with it pretty well, you know, this week um, coming back. You know, I had a bad game last weekend, but, um, you know, hey, Joe had a good game, you know. That's all that really matters to me, you know. We're friends, and, um, you know, whatever it takes for the team to win, you know, that's what we're going to do. When did you find out you were starting a quarterback? Well, I found out this morning about 8 o'clock at breakfast, so, um, you know, it was a surprise. But all week, you know, both me and Joe had prepared like we were the starters, and, um, you know, that's how you got to do. I was so from week one to week two as any week during the season as you kind of evaluate the way things went in the game did you make some of that progress i think we did i think we made a lot of progress especially on the defensive side of the ball got a little more consistency on offense and we're gonna have to continue to get a little more consistent each and every day that we have an opportunity to practice to have a chance to win and that's just the way the game of football is and we'll have to continue to get better now you do have two weeks before your next game against the Furman Paladins mm -hmm. in Greenville on the 26th of this month. Uh, actually, the open date worked out maybe a little better for you this way. I really think it does because Furman has a super football team and they're all very, very well coached. And we'll have to be going on the road for the very first time. And this will give us some extra time to prepare for Furman and also get some of the bumps and bruises healed up before we travel to Greenville. Now, with the open date this week, Georgia Southern uh, changes their practice routine a little bit. You'll work, I guess, about three days during the week, but your junior varsity makes its debut on Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon, we play the Citadel, J.B. Memorial Stadium in Savannah, uh, sponsored by the Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club, and I think that's a 3 o'clock kickoff. That'll be the first of four J.V. games on the schedule. Again, this is the first year we brought a J.V. program to Georgia Southern, and Explain to the people how that works as to actually who will probably appear in this game. Well, those people that have not possibly been red shirted or we're going to let some of the new walk-ons play 
uh, in the JV game, and I think it'll give them some valuable experience. It'll be good to get for the quarterbacks, to the young quarterbacks, get some valuable experience. And, and those people that haven't been registered before, we're going to play them also. So a lot of the folks who work so hard at practice during the week and helping some of the regulars get ready will have a chance to play Friday at 3 p.m. in Savannah. And so we'll see you next week at the same time. We'll be talking about uh, that and looking at the assistant coaches. We have more on the Tim Stowers Show.